Are you fed up with the way things are? I'm fed up. Do you want action? I want action. Do you think it's time to take back the government? Yeah! Are you mad as hell? We're mad as hell! Well, sit down and shut up. Who died and made you king? We're working on it, and we'll get to it. Just take a number and shut up! Paid for by the state employees who want to keep their jobs. so exciting the night before Halloween and I guess though this is the night when all the parties are really going to happen Saturday night and you know people are always caught at the last minute unprepared for costume parties this is happening that always happens to me but that of course is when women always they pull out that old standby put on something black paint a few whiskers on hey I'm a cat right I mean that women all in like 50% of the women at any party I'm a cat you know <laughs> Guys, though, can never quite, they can figure anything like that out. Guys, you know, they, oh, God, a part of, they panic, they open their closets, they look around, and they'll find, like, crutches. You know, so they'll go, like, as a guy on, you know, I'm a guy on crutches, which is, like, that's, like, the usual level of a guy's imagination. If, you know, that's your problem. If you're, you, you're staying up late, you're waiting to go to the party, you've been putting it off, just relax, because we've got a few simple costumes that you can do quickly and easily get you out to the party. Now, just follow these instructions. You'll be the hit of the party. For example, just try this. Put some chewing tobacco on your head, moisten it with water. You can be the floor of the Philadelphia Phillies dugout. <laughs> that's a good, it's, it's innovative. You'll, you'll be the only one. You'll be the only one. Or try just as a concept thing here, just get lots of blank price stickers, write different prices on them, stick them all over your body. You can go as a product from a drug emporium shelf, which is just a concept thing. Or try this, paint yourself gray, wrap a scarf around your neck, walk real slow, you'll be the waiting for the interurban statue, which, you know, it's just, if you're in Fremont, it's perfect. Finally, try this, wrap yourself in brown crepe paper and just put a lot of dents in it all over the place and you'll be a Washington State fairy dock, which, it's a high concept. It's a high, it's a concept piece. They'll be trying to figure it out all night. You'll be the hit of the party, actually. And of course, I just want you to tell you, just be careful when you're out there, because there's a lot of danger on the night of the undead. And fortunately, we'll have Seattle's finest watching over everybody. Of course, the cops, they can't always be everywhere. And when trouble breaks out, sometimes we have to turn to a whole other group of enforcers whose job is just as tough. Take a look. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. Librarians. Filmed on location with the men and women of the Seattle Public Library System. What you gonna do? Yeah, you know, the reason I like this job is that every day it's something different. You never know what's going to happen on any given day. Absolutely. One day you might have to check a book in, then maybe the next day check a book out, maybe then help somebody find a book. Yeah, you know, you really got to stay on your toes. Absolutely. Especially this time of year, you know, where the, the kids are going crazy. There's all... What the devil is... All right, come on, let's move. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, what are you doing? Uh, no, nothing. We're just just looking up words mm -hmm. and stuff. Looking up words. What kind of words? I mean, just, you know, normal words. Uh, not so fast, mister. <laughs> All right, there's some pretty smudged fingerprints right around that word right there. Mm -hmm. Copulation. 
Now, you want to tell us what you were really doing? Oh, we were looking up dirty words oh. in the dictionary. All right, gentlemen, uh, you're done here. You want to get your ass over to fiction? Get over there, right now. Try something by D.H. Lawrence, okay? They're not bad guys, they just uh, well, you can't seem to stay out of trouble. Last week I caught him going through the National Geographic looking for topless shots of Tahitians. I said D.H. Lawrence, okay? Well, now, so, I don't know which category. I know, I'm confused. Oh, excuse me, sir, we're gonna have to see what's in that backpack. Uh, there's nothing in here. Well, then why did it beep? Uh, that was my keys. Yeah, this isn't an airport, sir. Let's see what's in the backpack. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. No! Got in here. What is no! It? What is it? What is it? Oh, God. What? The romantic oh. English garden? <laughs> this is no problem. You can oh. just check this out here. Check it out for me. It's all I'm right. I'm ruined. They're just gonna kick me out of Enum Claw. I'm ruined. Turn that damn thing off. <laughs> oh, my it's God. Okay. It's all right. Oh, I'm going to go the guy's from Enumclaw, and uh, he's into romantic English gardens, needlepoint, things like that. And, uh, I, you know, I guess his buddies think he's some kind of freak or something like that. But, see, to me, that's what libraries are for. I think we need, you know, more people from Enumclaw. Well, not, you know, not a lot, but, uh, well, some. Actually, it probably would be best if they stayed in Enumclaw. Oh, boy, what do we have here? Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, yes. uh, this is the New York Times. This is the finest newspaper in the world. When we return the New York Times, we fold it like this. Understand? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, all right. Well, shouldn't that paper be folded, too? Uh, this one? Yeah. That's fine. That's okay. Okay, now that over there is Jeff. He's one of our rookie librarians. Uh... Looks like he's having a hard time of it, though. Yeah, I better see what's going on. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, buddy, what's going on? Well, I'm trying to file this book on paleontology away, but it doesn't seem to fit here. Yeah, you know what, uh, buddy, that's because you're in the literature section. See, you want to be, Jeff, Jeff, you want to be down there. Right over there, but there you go. Yeah, I don't know what they're teaching our kids in librarian school these days. I mean, <laughs> guy does not know the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah, you know, when I was in the academy, they used to drill us on Dewey, like, every day. You didn't know your Dewey, you had to go down and give him 50. Right now. These days, I don't know, the whole profession is going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, it's a Am sad I right? state of affairs. Am I right? Yes, you're right. Am I right? You're damn right. Bad boys, bad boys. Librarian. What you gonna do when you Stay with us. We've got a great show. We'll be right back. Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Ballard Computer in Seattle, Kirkland, and now open in Tacoma. Hi, honey. Hi. You're home early. What you doing? I just thought I'd snort a little cocaine. <laughs> honey, don't use that stuff. Here, try this instead. Hmm. Blow with calcium. Yeah, it's got everything yours does, but with calcium, too. So I get the cocaine, plus the calcium my body needs anyway. I like that. Honey? Oh, there you are. How you doing? Mentally? Paranoid and delusional. How about physically? Great. Thanks to all that calcium. Blow with calcium. Request it from your dealer by name. Welcome back to Today, Tonight. We're talking with Dr. Brandon Crenshaw, the controversial psychologist who has written this remarkable new self-help book, Gilligan Therapy, How to Escape <laughs> from Your Own Uncharted Island of Despair. And Dr. Crenshaw, what is Gilligan Therapy? Well, Gilligan Therapy is my theory of treatment whereby any psychological problem can be equated with one of the characters on the TV show, Gilligan's Island. That's fascinating. Now, how has the rest of the mental health community reacted to Gilligan Therapy? They think I'm a fruitcake. I see. 
Well, Dr. Crenshaw, before we went to break, you said you would actually demonstrate this treatment for us on the program. With us now is Lars Pantone, who is a production assistant here on Today Tonight, who's agreed to share some of his problems with us. All right, Lars, may I call you Lars? I guess. All right, Lars, <laughs> what's your problem? Well, my mom and I haven't been getting along lately. She's been really upset since my dad left, and I just can't seem to do anything right. Your problem is simple, Lars. You've got a Gilligan complex. <laughs> As I explain in my book, Gilligans are typically underachievers, especially in the presence of strong, domineering authority figures, skippers. And <laughs> interestingly enough, Gilligans are frequently bedwetters. <laughs> are you a bedwetter, Lars? Maybe. <laughs> Simple solution, Lars. Try wearing this hat for a couple of weeks. <laughs> See if that doesn't cheer your mom up. Oh, okay. Now, that is amazing, and you say that this theory can help anybody. Anybody. Okay, how about the people right here in our audience? Could you help them? Absolutely. Okay, great. Now, who has a problem for Dr. Crenshaw? How about you there, ma'am? Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Crenshaw, my name is Deirdre, and I live in Forks. I'm so unhappy. <clears throat> it seems my life has no meaning, and I'm depressed all the time. What can I do? Okay, clearly what we have here is a repressed lovey howl complex. <laughs> Deirdre, all you need to be happy is, first of all, get the hell out of Forks. <laughs> then simply marry a multimillionaire and live a carefree life based on shallowness and material wealth. You see, it's really quite simple when you understand the principles outlined in my book. That is fascinating. Uh, how about you there, sir? Go right ahead, please, sir. Uh, yes, it's all very interesting. Because uh, you see, uh, my name is Russell Johnson, and I played the professor on Gilly <laughs> What's your problem, Russell? <laughs> well, I, I don't have a problem, but since I played the professor on the very show that your therapy is based upon, I thought you might find it interesting that I was in your audience. Well, now, that's all well and good, Russell, but I'm afraid I'm here to help people with problems, not stroke the ego of some actor. <laughs> you know, but I was on Gilligan's Island. Russell, I got that. <laughs> What's your problem? I don't have a problem. Oh, I see. Mr. Smart Actor Man has it all figured out, does he? You think you know all the answers, right? Well, you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like you have yourself a professor complex. I am the professor. Oh, sit down. <laughs> Hold on, you can't talk to him that way. Well, that's just who the hell I am. and I played Mary Ann on Gilligan's Island. Okay. okay. All right, this is good. This is great. You see, I get this all the time. This woman <laughs> clearly believes that she is Mary Ann. Mary Ann's <laughs> typically come to the rescue of those they feel have been mistreated. It's all in the book. I am Mary Ann. You know, I think she really might <laughs> be Mary Ann. <laughs> We're having some fun here, sure, but all right, okay, if you're Mary Ann... What was Gilligan's favorite dessert? Ha, coconut cream pie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, but you see, anybody could have gotten that. So I could take any 20 people from this audience here, ask them the same damn question, they'd give me the same answer. Why, well, that doesn't prove anything. I am Dawn Wells, I played Marianne, and I've written a book. And so did I. Mm -hmm. I thought I told you to sit down. <laughs> I, I really... That might be Don Wells. Look, and I think you've got a professor complex. I thought I was Gilligan. Hey, I'm the professor. Sit down. <sighs> hi, Russ. Oh, hi, Don. How you doing, honey? Hey, you look great. You do, too. Oh, God, it's nice to see you. Well, too, uh, sweetie. I'm afraid we're out of time. We'll see you next week on Today Tonight. And you know something? That is Don Wells, and you are a fruitcake. Yeah, well, you've got the biggest case of skipper complex I've ever seen. Studio 
amplification for Almost Live provided by American Music. Now open in Tacoma. Thank you, everyone, for coming today for this special debate uh, featuring Seattle City Mayor Norm Rice and his challenger, David Stern. All right, why don't we start with you, Mayor Rice? Uh, let me begin by wait, saying. Wait, 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 just I a am. doggone minute. How come he always gets to go first? Look, we're just going alphabetically here. That's all we're doing. Well, David now. comes before Norm in my alphabet. Yeah, well, we're figuring this like, you know, Rice before Stern. That's how we're okay, doing Okay, fine. It. Okay, so uh, just continue there, Mayor Rice, would you? Well, I was just about to mention that uh, David has been taking credit for coming up with that happy face thing. Now, you see, I knew he was going to bring that up, and I don't care what anybody says. I invented it first. All right, uh, well, assuming for a moment that that is the case, why did you draw a mouth and two eyes, but no nose? Well, you probably think it's as easy as drawing a circle. But it's a lot tougher than that. You try it. Well, do you uh, have one with a nose? I had a feeling this was going to come up, so yeah, I did one with a nose. Pass this down there, would you, please? This ought to put this thing to rest. <laughs> Where the ears? Good evening and welcome to the John Report. I'm John. Here's my report. Well, a story on Tacoma's beleaguered Ivan the Gorilla aired on NBC's Today Show this week, and the story turned out well with only three viewers noticing when Ivan's picture was inadvertently substituted with that of movie reviewer Gene Shalit. <laughs> The Seattle Times announced Friday that starting in November, it'll offer free voice personal ads. Now, one doubtful staffer was heard to remark, I don't know about this, do we really want Times readers to intermarry? Mm. <laughs> Senator Bob Packwood is under increasing pressure to, ret uh, to turn his personal diary over to Senate Ethics Committee. Packwood claims the diary primarily contains inside political information, citing, citing as an example an entry which says, I carefully considered the pros and cons of the energy development appropriations issue as I stroked her creamy white thighs. <laughs> The city of Tacoma is, <clears throat> is planning to build a museum to honor world-famous glass artist Dale Chihuly. It'll be Chihuly's first ever exi exhibition of bulletproof glass. <laughs> a, medical, a medical report shows that measles have almost entirely disappeared in the United States. However, the same report says that weasels are still plentiful, as much of a nuisance as ever. Canada's newly elected Prime Minister, John Christian, is already making some tough new demands on the United States. He says that if Clinton expects Canada to go along with the NAFTA deal, the U.S. better damn well start buying some more Gordon Lightfoot albums. <laughs> A new, new European-style coffee house called Zio Rico will open this week in downtown Seattle. The coffee house will feature stained cherrywood leather, chairs, hand-woven rugs, and waitresses with plenty of body hair. Finally! <laughs> Seattle's newest public art called Wall of Death was recently unveiled on the Burke Gilman Trail. The installation followed several failed projects by the artist, including his original concept, Face of Death. This has been the John Report. Thank you. We'll be right back. This cheesecake is great. It's delicious. Yeah. You look absolutely beautiful tonight. You don't look half bad yourself. <laughs> Steve? Huh? Steven! What? You're dating in your sleep again. In what? You're dating in your sleep again. Oh. Oh, jeez. I'm 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 sorry. Can I finish my dessert? You get back in this bed right now. Look, I'm sorry. Do you, do you need a ride home or something? Stephen, right now. I'll get a cab. Honey, someday you're going to really hurt yourself. I mean, you're going to end up cutting yourself with a knife or eating something you're allergic to or being engaged to someone you don't even know. Uh, I know. I'm going to get some help. Good. Can I get you anything? Well, it looks like the slut left some cheesecake. 
Honey, get me some milk while you're up. And a napkin. Well, that's just about it for this week. I want to thank the professor and Marianne for uh, showing up here, and Russell Johnson, who has here on Gilligan's Isle, now available in your bookstore. And Marianne, Don Wells has got the Gilligan Island cookbook, which includes the recipe for coconut cream pie. Thirteen of them. That's right. That's great. Okay, kids. Be careful when you're biting into those apples, and remember, don't forget to turn your clocks back. And we'll see you next week. what people are saying about Initiative 601. It's a new style of Levi's jeans, says Mary Tyler of Everett. It's one of those long, thin cigarettes, says Mike Kramer of North Bend. Here is what people are saying about Initiative 602. It's the highway from Monroe to Snoqualmie, says Pat Swenson of Crown Hill. It's a bar in Pioneer Square says Jerry Thompson of Queen Anne Hill. It's the area code for the state of Washington, says the Washington State Dyslexic Association. Initiative 601 and 602. It's whatever you want them to be.